And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. One of the biggest releases of the year, today I'm going to be talking about Mystery Express from Days of Wonder. Mystery Express is a game that is the theme of the Orient Express, that train that travels across Europe, and a murder taking place on which I've read many multiple uh, detective stories about, and this is a detective, a deduction game. This is not Days of Wonder's first deduction game, that would be Mystery of the Abbey, but this is a very different feel to it. If I would compare it to a game and how it feels, it has a very similar feel to Sid Saxon's Sleuth. Uh, but Mystery Express, while not, not, I guess maybe it's geared more towards families, but it is a heavier bit of a deduction game. Let me show you what it looks like. The board for Mystery Express is a long, thin board, uh, different than many board games. And at the top of it, you can see right here is the train. And players will be moving back and forth on the train. Over here you can see cards for the conductor. These are extra passengers which we'll be getting on the train. And then this actually shows the path of the train as it travels across Europe. The train will be moving along this track here. These little pieces here, which are nice little heavy plastic busts of different players, are the players' pieces which will be placed in the train moving around. And there is a conductor who will be a notable player during the game. The game supports three to five different players. Comes with a little whistle here to determine who goes first each turn. And so there's some neat pieces to the game. Let's talk about how the murder is solved. There's five different types of cards in the game here, and these are used to determine how the murder took place. Or more specifically, the suspect cards tell you who the murderer is. These tell you how they committed the murder. The location cards tell you where the murder happened. The motive cards tell you why they did it. And the time cards tell you when it happened. Who, what, where, when, why. So at the beginning of the game, you'll shuffle the decks, take a card off of each deck, and you will be putting these underneath the board. So, for example, in this case, Candy is the murderer or murderess. She did it in the smoking car. She did it out of jealousy. What did she do? She poisoned the victim, and she did so at 4 o'clock. Now, much of the game is revolving around these cards. Time cards are a little bit different. I'll talk about them later. But the suspect cards, or just like all the rest of them, there's two of each character in the deck. So, for example, there's two Sir Edmonds, and there's two Candies. And players are trying to figure out which one there is only one of. Because, for example, I took one of the Candy cards out. So once you can figure out there's only one Candy card in existence, you know then that she's the murderer. So these cards are all taken together and shuffled, and one deck is made out of them. That deck is then dealt seven cards to each player. The game comes with a thick pad of deduction sheets, and players will be taking one of these deduction sheets and putting it in a special folder like thus of their player category so that they can keep all the information that they're using. They'll also get one of their player pieces that they'll be able to put on the board. And they also get a token for their player because each player has a special power and they can they just flip this token each turn to show that they've used their special power or not. Now these sheets, and let's take a look a little bit at the sheets, show the different possibilities and you can see some possibilities are only, po like for example, shot and stab are only possible in a five player game or shots only possible in a four player game. And players each day are going to keep track of the cards that they see. Obviously, they have, in the beginning of the game, seven cards in their hand. But unless you have both cards, for example, if you have both club cards, you'd be able to cross clubs out completely. But other than that, you're not sure because you may have the only copy of that card. And so you're trying to find out what cards are in other players' hands so that you can add them and cross them out. If not, turn two, you start over, and you go on and go forth trying to figure out how... The murderer is solved. For example, here's a score sheet I used in my last game. You can see in the very beginning of the game, I was able to eliminate pushed, but it took me a long time before I was able to eliminate hanged, and then I never was able to eliminate poisoned or clubbed. So at the end of the game, I guessed poisoned, which actually was incorrect. Every time the train moves to a new location, it shows on the board how many hours players have, and players simply move their pawns around using different of these actions to try to figure out what cards other players have in their hands. And each action takes a certain amount of hours. For example, they can go here, and each player has to pass a card to the next player. 
it ha all the cards have to be the same color and that costs one hour or they can go here at the dining car and in there they can ask a card from each player for that, that player to show them a card they look at the card they can mark down the information whenever a player shows a card to another player instead of putting it back in their hand they put it down in a discard pile in front of them and the reason players do that is so that you know you've never seen the same card twice so if I ask you for a location card and you give me a dining card and I cross it off and you put that in front of you and then later on someone else shows me a dining card I know that they are different cards because the cards are still in front of people there is a card that lets someone take some cards back in their hand which can be critical but it's not that big of a deal as the train travels there's the possibility for players to use one of the cars to take new passengers or new information that passengers bring, so bringing some more of the cars in their hand and this conductor will be moving around based on the tokens that are turned here each turn it will show where the conductor goes and as he moves around and players go to the same room where he is and do an action there they can switch one of their cards with one of the conductor cards here and so players are building their hand and slowly eliminating possibility after possibility. Time cards are done differently. Three times during the course of the game, players will take the whole deck of time cards, except for the one that's been taken out, and they will try to discover which time card is missing. Instead of there being two copies of each time, there are three. For example, the very first time we look at the time cards, simply we just take them over, and one person turns them over one at a time, like this until the whole deck has gone through everyone looks at it and so there's a bit of a memory element here trying to figure out which of the time cards is missing other times the cards are dealt out to the players and then switched and then the third time they're put down in three piles and covered up and for me this was a very difficult part of the game while other people found this easier on the second last turn of the game, players will have the opportunity to send out a telegram to guess any information that they may know or may just be guessing at. This doesn't really mean anything except as a tiebreaker. And in this game, a tiebreaker is very possible. And so each part of the telegram that you have correct, or you'll get a point for in a tiebreaker, and each part you have incorrect, you lose a point in a tiebreaker. So you could send a telegram with no information or maybe just one or two pieces of information. But most of the information will come from your sheet. At the end of the game, you will guess each of these five things. Maybe you know them all, uh, figuring it out during the course of the game. And probably the better you get as the game goes by. My first game, I got two out of the five, while the other players each got three, so I didn't do very well there. But as time went by, I was able to get three, and once I got four out just using the different ways. And I like how these different methods, different cards, give you different ways to get the cards from other players and you can see the back of the cards other players have you're just trying to figure out what the front of them says so it's a good old-fashioned murder mystery game and when I played this with one person they said this is so much like Clue and people are going to see that to me it's eons better than Clue but I think this game will have legs because people will look at it and say well it's very similar to Clue you're trying to figure out the different things but in this game you're not rolling any die in fact there's almost no luck in the game there's a bit of luck for example in one room you can search someone else's luggage and they hide this luggage bag in one of their hands and you have to guess which hand it is and if so you can search their luggage you say, well, that's kind of a silly game to be playing in the middle of this. Yes, but you don't have to do it if you don't want to. And sometimes it's critical that I want to see a card someone else has, so I'll try it. If I fail, I lose an hour, but if I succeed, I can get a card that may help me solidify one of my cases on the table. I really find that this game can be a bit of a brain burner as you're trying to figure it out. Keeping track of the information on these sheets is fun. Uh, but at the same time, the theme really helps fit the situation. It seems to work well with both three, four, and five players. It's one that people have a lot of fun with. I'm hesitant to call it a light, friendly game. I think it's a little bit more heavy than that. At the same time, don't run away. It's not going to make your brain shrivel up into a pile of goo. Uh, but at the, you feel like you've earned your victory when you figure out who just committed that murder on New Orient Express. Again, as a big fan of those stories and movies about the Orient Express, I think this is an excellent job bringing it to the table. Once again, Days of Wonder has another winner on their hands. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.